Today I'm here with Bobby Carey of Carey's Tax Derby, and we're going to talk about something that all deer hunters kind of need to know how to do, and that is caping out a deer. Handling a good trophy mount starts in the field, doesn't it? Right, right. You got to really make sure you're not dragging it around, losing hair, getting it wet, try to keep it dry because that's where a lot of the bacteria sets in really quick and you'll lose hair and it's not going to look too good on your mount. What would be the very first step you would do after field dressing? If this was my deer and I'm going to start getting it ready for the taxidermist, I mean, he came down right to where the breastbone starts mm -hmm. and that's about where you want to stop your cutting on your fur. We're going to be needing about this much of his cape around his body. We're going to do a complete circle around this and we're going to be cutting from the inside out. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to grab a pair of gloves and we'll get started. What do you think? Sounds good. We're going to be making three circles here, one around the body and one around both legs. So I'm going to start cutting here. Circle one, huh? Yes. Just go ahead and get the other circles cut here and just go all the way around the deer. Okay, this is circle number two. A lot of tax trimmers use a scalpel blade. It's a little cheating, but you can get these too. We're gonna be following that white and brown and we're gonna take it all the way up to where we made our cuts at. We're gonna do that on both sides? Yes. I think we got it here. All right, I'm gonna trade you sides. Okay. And same thing on this side, just follow the white and brown line. Okay. If you're not sure where the white and brown is, to be safe, just kind of go out into the brown a little more. Okay. All right, got our lines cut. We're going to go ahead and start peeling some of the skin off the legs here. It's just kind of a slow process. Just take your time and keep the holes minimum. Yeah, I would think that was the most important thing. If you poke this and put a hole in here, that could be something you're going to have to try to fix later on in the process. Right. So. It's just best not to do that, and it makes for a nicer mount. It gets a little where the meat tries to stay attached to the skin here, so I always like to put my fingers underneath the skin and always know where it's at. You don't want to cut your fingers, so that would kind of help you not cut the hide. So, gotcha. Okay. Even though I haven't cut the hide and my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you ever talk to a tax nervous that says they've never cut their fingers, you're talking to a liar. <laughs> yes. We're going to keep rotating it here. And you can do this without a hoist. I've done them on the back of the trucks or whatever. It just, you gotta keep flipping them back and forth, which is harder on you. This is the best way to do it. It does a really good job. And like I said, this is just kind of tedious here, but it's gotta take your time. And if you leave meat on the hide, it's no big deal. I can get it off later, so don't worry about that. Just concentrate on not tearing the hide. And this area right here is where you really need to be careful because this is the most critical area. And like I said, this is where his, uh, armpits are and this is going to be part of the mount so you really need to take your time and just kind of feel the, the fur and the skin and this right here is the part of the mount that a person's going to notice first other than the antlers you don't want to see a big cut and where some tax members had to sew it up and you can see the hair lines messed up we're just going to take the rest of it down to the neck as far as we can get it and okay. and what we're going to do i'm going to cut where i'm going to be cutting with a saw and get the meat out of the way and it'll just be the spinal cord in there all right and we'll get the saw out We're at the point right here to where if you were going to have a taxidermist within the state, you harvested the animal, do your work, this is where you would stop. Now, if you were going to travel from out of state into the state of Kentucky, we still have the brain matter and probably some spinal column here that right. would need to be removed. So we're going to move this to the table and pick it up at that point in time to go ahead and finish this process out. I see you have a tape measure here. The couple measurements we're going to get are from the very tip of the nose. Tip of the nose to the corner of the eye. So you want to take these measurements and then jot these down and just provide these to your tax department so they can make the most realistic possible amount. What's the next step? I'm going to go ahead and start skinning it. I like to use the V cut from burr to burr. So I'm going to be doing a, a V here. Put the screwdriver underneath there and oh, wow. start tearing it off there. And then coming back out with a little short incision here. And I'm just going to do a little pre-cutting here. I'm going to be cutting this ear off here at the connection point. So then I'm going to be getting the screwdriver out again and using it back here a little bit, get the rest off the burr. A little bit of twisting, a little bit of cutting, a little bit of yes. prying, all that's involved. Right? Yes. <laughs> we'll do the other side here. Okay, I'm going to turn it over and we're going to skin this mouth out. Every taxidermist does a little different, but I'm going to attack this from both ends here. Again, you don't want to be cutting holes in the face. That's where it's the hardest to hide in the face. Take this nose off here. 
Got some cartilage in here I'm gonna be cutting. You know, a lot of customers do their own Ural mounts, and you still need to do this process. It'd be good if you were in an anatomy class for wildlife, too, because, man, you kind of yes. get a good idea of what all this looks like. All right, I'm going to turn it over again and try to get this cape off the back of the meat here. Okay. Just kind of going back and forth on the yeah, outside. Just so, yeah, rotate around and make your way around the face and just pulling all the hide forward, huh? Yeah. I'll take my finger and put it inside the eye around the skin so I won't cut that eyelid. And I just stay really close to the skeleton here. The eyelashes and everything are staying on the hide that you're going to be using. Yes. You want all that on there yes. because that's what really makes it look good. Yes. Occasionally you'll lose hair follicles and bristles and stuff, but the more you keep, the more you realize that it does add to the mount. Okay, just kind of keep going back and forth. That's just other burr here. So really the tools you're gonna to need, obviously gloves are nice, but you're gonna need a couple of really sharp knives, scalpels if you got them, Yes. a tape measure, a screwdriver or something to be able to pry that hide away from underneath the bottom of the end. Right. The amount of work that you have to come through to make this thing look identical to what it did in the field and the precision that you have to go through is pretty amazing. Right, it's a, it's a lot of work. I mean, uh, people complain about prices a lot of time, but there's a, there's a lot that goes into it, a lot, you know, behind the scenes. So uh, you gotta pay for quality. It's the amount of time that each taxidermist spends on it. That's what you're paying for the time you're spending on your deer. So if you were out of state and you were gonna bring this deer back in, this portion here is completely legal to bring in. Right. Let's say you're gonna be traveling several hours. How would you handle this to make sure that it's best preserved? I'm gonna take these ears and roll them up into the hide. It helps protect them because the tip of the ears and the nose would be the first thing that would get freezer burned. I would put this in a plastic bag or two, and if the hunter had time to put it in the freezer overnight, mm -hmm. and it'd be nice and cold for the trip. You do not want it at the bottom of the cooler with the ice on top of it. You want it on top of the cooler and really bag it good so it doesn't get any moisture at all. Taking the prize portion off, the antlers. You wanna make sure you cut and leave enough to where you've got solid bone in between all this, right? Right, and I'm just gonna cut an inch or so in front of the pedicles here and same the back, just so it'll fit into some of these forms I have. When you're doing this, you don't want to cut his antlers at all, so you yeah, <laughs> oh, gotta yeah. really be careful. Now those bone saws are made to cut bone. They do great on bone. They don't do real well on fur or meat, do no. they? No. <laughs> all right, now we're gonna flip it around, do the front. And it's pretty hard on that top there. This old boy's been fighting. I'm sure it's a good thing it is hard. Yes. All right, and you're just talking about the brain matter, and there's plenty of it right there that you would want to go across state lines with, so that needs to go. I'll clean up the excess meat, and we'll get this membrane off here. There you go. I'll put a little borax on it to dry it up. I'll just kind of dip these antlers down in it. Just spread it and rub it all over, all over the inside. And that will drop that meat, keep the bugs off of it, and you're good to travel. Well, Bobby, I tell you, I appreciate the education on this, and transportation of deer parts are becoming more and more restricted. It's becoming more and more important as a hunter, if you think you may want to preserve your trophy with a taxidermist, to know how to do this. Right.